My name is Karen Redman, I'm the Mayor of the Town of Gawla and in this week's conversation I am speaking with Angie Michael who is the Principal of Gawla and District College, my old school, which at that time of course was Gawla High. Hi Angie. Hi Karen. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. And yourself? Oh look, I'm, I'm doing really, really well. Excellent. I am really looking forward to this conversation today, Angie. Mm -hmm. I've seen such good things happening at Gawler and District College and I just think so many people will want to know mm. uh, what our local uh, super school is doing. Mm -hmm. So let's get started. Okay. Tell us a, a little bit about your background, you, you know, where you grew up, mm -hmm. um, your childhood and some of the influences at that time. Mm -hmm. My background um, is Greek, my parents are Greek, my dad um, was born in an uh, island called Lemnos from Greece and he travelled to Australia when he was 17 years of age all on his own. He was the first um, child in his family and he was the fifth born child of seven. So he was quite an adventurous young lad I might say. At 17 uh, he came to Australia and made a life for himself. He met my mother who was born here. Her parents came from the island of uh, Castellorizzo and they actually came out in the 30s. So they were here quite early on before the Great uh, Migration, as we know it. Um, so mum was born here and went to school here. Um, my dad um, was a worker and I sort of feel like I've uh, taken a leaf out of his book, I might say. Very strong man and dedicated to his work. Travelled Australia, um, worked specifically in South Australia, um, uh, building roads um, in Adelaide. He, he uh, uh, supported the build of the Morfitt Street Bridge. We were fortunate to have two work, work experience opportunities. Um, and of course, the, at, at the first chance, I went to my local primary school and I went to Lo Lockleys North Primary School. Um, and I was actually working with young children. Um, it was actually a foundation class. And I did work out very quickly that um, perhaps working with little E's was not my cup of tea. <laughs> so <laughs> as much as I love the little ones, um, I really struggled with them, you know, at 16 years of age that I was at the time. <laughs> but I, then I had a second opportunity to do another lot of work experience and I went to a hairdressing salon because I was interested in fashion and design and all that sort of thing. And, and again, I reckon after the first day, I thought, no, 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 it's teaching and it's secondary teaching. Your parents had clearly uh, an influence on your life and you've talked a little bit about your dad. What about your mum? Mum's family were all English speaking because they were all born here and I was always proud of the fact that um, mum was, was, because she spent a lot of time on her own because dad was working away so frequently, um, mum was that person that would come to school with me for parent-teacher night and you know, any schooling event, mum was there. Um, I was really interested in sport as well. I um, played soccer up until year 10 and you know, mum would be um, at the soccer games and she'd be at the celebrations. And my mum had the best job ever, let me tell you. She was the receptionist at Festival Records. Oh, I remember and Festival back Records. Back in the 70s, yeah, yeah. Festival Records um, worked with you know, the biggest Australian uh, pop and rock groups and so you know Sherbet was my favourite group at the time <laughs> and we would get free tickets um, to these fantastic concerts you know Skyhooks, um, Sherbet, I remember these great concerts Peter Frampton was a massive oh, concert yeah. at Adelaide Oval or wherever it was. So you never deviated from wanting to be a teacher and you go to Teachers College, um, tell us a little bit about that. I actually got into design teaching so for me, it was like um, I, I was practicing my hobby all day, every day. Um, 
and it was just fabulous. And, and again, I was able to um, um, create beautiful friendships um, with the people that, you know, in, in my year level. But my love of learning clearly hasn't uh, stopped from, from those days when uh, you know, a few years later, uh, when I was teaching, I decided to um, go back to university. I went to Flinders University and studied for my master's in education with a focus on the studies of Asia. Oh. And again, um, some great opportunities. So you finish your teaching degree and uh, you need to find a job. Mm -hmm. How did that go? I don't know where I get this confidence or determination from, but by hook or by crook, I was going to get a job. And I made sure that because I did design teaching, I had to have a portfolio, that my portfolio was um, inspiring. Um, I knew my stuff. I just wanted to get out there. In fact, I was so um, focused on getting a job that I had applied to work basically anywhere in South Australia. And basically I was offered a position um, uh, in the metropolitan area at Parafield Gardens High School. And it was a one year contract and I was absolutely over the moon. And back in those days, I reckon from Lockleys to Parafield, it probably took me about maybe 40 minutes to get there. Um, but out I went and I just absolutely loved it. Um, and then the following year I landed another contract and that was back at um, Gillis Plains High School, and I was teaching art and design. Um, again, a great year uh, of my life. And the following year, I was offered permanency um, out at Augusta Park High School, which was in Port Augusta. I'm at uh, Port Augusta, and I'm gonna make this work, and I need to be part of the community. Um, and so I did, and it was a fabulous time in my life. Um, up until my mum got very, very ill and I ended up um, cutting my, um, back. that was back in the days of four-year guarantees. I cut that short and came home because my sister was overseas at the time and, and mum was gravely ill um, and uh, helped nurse her through um, uh, to wellness again. Um, and then I didn't end up going back to Port Augusta. Um, but after four years, I, I, would you believe I ended up back at Parafield Gardens High School. I have had some really positive role models um, in all elements of education and my life, of course, as well, um, who have been inspiring and motivating and actually quite supportive of my leadership growth. I think about a year and a half later, I was invited to apply for a, a, a senior leader position at Powerful Gardens High School. Oh, and they so were I watching became you. An, became an assistant <laughs> principal. Um, oh my gosh. Yes, two years after being a coordinator. So um, that, that was quite an exciting uh, time in my life. Um, and I'd had my little boy at that point. And again, you know, I thank my parents. Um, very fortunate that they were able to look after him for me. Um, because I became a single mum um, at that time in my life as yeah, well yeah. Um, and really focused. I needed that support from my family and, you know, they've always been there for me. I, I wouldn't have been able to, I wouldn't be where I am now if it wasn't for my family. Um, and that includes Paul, my, my son, um, because, um, you know, I've, I've been a working mother all of his life um, and I've been a full-time working mother uh, throughout his whole life. Um, he's now a teacher. Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> he teaches uh, health and personal development and he loves what he does. Um, you know, I belonged uh, at, at Powerful Gardens High School when I ended up, I think over a 30 year period, um, um, working at, at the school for 20 years. Um, and do you know, not one day has ever been the same or was ever, ever, ever the same at Powerfield. Um, and I, st I started working with senior secondary school students um, and I think before, within two years, um, from a matter of circum a number of circumstances, I ended up becoming the deputy principal. So again, it was a very short, you know, in four, four years really, I'd gone from a teacher to a deputy principal. So your experience around resilience in the North, because you've clearly got a lot of experience working here. When I hear these stories about our young people um, having to struggle through these difficult times, 
Um, I want to be their advocate. Um, I want young people to feel confident enough to come to myself, our staff, um, to have that go-to person because sometimes they don't. And if we weren't there, who would be there for them? You decide to go for the position of principal of Gawler and District College. Why did you do that? For me, I've always seen Gawler as a wonderful um, small community. I've been at the school now two years um, and I'm absolutely loving it. Although I might say um, it's been a bit of a roller coaster um, and I'm at a point now, however, you know, there were some, um, a, you know, a number of challenges uh, when I was first appointed that I had to work through. So we've got a wonderful leadership team. Um, we actually call ourselves the dream team. Um, we are committed. We are cohesive in our thinking. We are clear um, and we are dedicated. Tell me about the achievements in the last couple of years of Gawler and District College. Our phonics testing in year one. Um, over the last three years, um, when you work through that phonics screening, students need to be at a certain benchmark. And so three years ago, um, only 40% of our students hit that benchmark. Um, two years ago, 50% hit that benchmark. And last year, 96% um, of our year ones um, have um, got, got the standard of educational achievement in relation to their phonics screening. When you're talking about student achievement, we need to ensure that the capacity of our staff is at a point where they are really clear around learning improvement strategies um, and feel confident in not only what they are teaching, but how they are teaching. But it's got to be engaging. Mm. And like I said before, it's got to be inclusive as well. So um, through an observational uh, process, um, I believe our teachers um, have learnt a lot and are confident and therefore um, our students are benefiting from that. Our retention rates, for example, from the beginning of the year to the end of the year have actually been um, e extremely positive. Um, and what that tells me is that the students in year 12 um, are engaged in their learning throughout the year. So um, some fantastic uh, results. Last year, in fact, we had the highest, um, I believe, historic, historical um, ATAR result. I think it was about 94.5 or, yeah. or something like that. Yeah. And it was the highest ever historical ATAR. So, you know, we're extremely proud of, of the results of year 12s. The latest directions uh, for the junior school revolve around um, immersing ourselves in the data and supporting teachers to unpack that data um, and be, uh, uh, to become, and to use that data to um, deliver curriculum um, in order to individualise that learning for, for students. Um, and in the secondary school, basically, the, the second direction is around supporting teachers to fully understand the high impact reading strategies. Um, and the third direction is a direction that I actually wanted us to focus on, and that's around differentiating the learning for every student across our site. Does year 12 matter? Absolutely, year 12 matters. It matters for them personally because there's a real sense of achievement at their graduations um, and um, you know the, the qualifications that they they get if they're doing TAFE courses um, can lead into full qualifications once they finish school so absolutely yes year 12 matters. What three pieces of advice would you give uh, a young person starting out on their life journey they finish school uh, and they they want to be a success how would you advise them? Follow your passions and your dreams. If you're passionate about something, then just, just do it. Um, because you know that, that saying is wonderful. If you love um, what you do, you'll never have to work a day in your life. And I feel that way. Although, you know, sometimes I have my ups and downs. Um, I love what I do. And, um, and I'm sure that, you know, that that shows in my work. Um, so follow your passions. Um, if you want to be successful, you've got to work hard. You've got to be, you've got to be committed.
and work hard might be, I don't know, 10 hours a day. It might mean that you've got to work weekends um, to make ends meet or to get that project done. Um, do your research. Be clear. Be clear and convincing in where you want to go. Read. Don't ever stop reading. I think don't ever lose the passion for learning. We're all learners. I the, the learning that I've done over the last two years has been hugely, it was, it's huge, just immense. And so don't ever think that learning ever stops. Well, we've come to the end of this conversation, Angie, and I've I've learnt so much from you today. Um, I've learnt uh, some new words. <laughs> uh, but just your passion for life, your passion for learning, uh, your love of your career, mm. uh, your, <laughs> your um, determined... Uh, uh, your determined uh, vision around leadership but also uh, understanding that learning and teaching uh, is all about the student mm -hmm. uh, and it's individualised teaching and delivering that in a beautiful way. Mm -hmm. So thank you for coming along today. Thank you for having me, Karen. It's been wonderful. <laughs>